Welcome back to working on the old Forte. She still looks pretty doggone good, but she still needs a motor. Let's tear this one down and see what we got. Just in case you don't know what's going on or you have forgotten over the last 25 parts of working on this old car, she needs a motor. Yes, sir. She's an Earl Burner bad. Well, matter of fact, you can probably see in some of the videos, smoke just a rolling out the fuel pipe right there. Yep, rings are shot real bad. So I decided we're gonna build her a motor. Nothing major, just a nice little cruiser motor. Uh, we're gonna tear this 327 down. This is what was in dude for many, many years coming out of a 69 Impala. Uh, let's tear it down, and if I can use the crank and the rods, then that's what we're going to do. We'll just put some flat top pistons aboard out, probably 30, and I'm considering putting that cam over here because, like I said, it's just a cruiser. We don't need no 1,000 horsepower motor. No, 300, 350 horsepower would be just perfect. Anyway, let's get her tore down, see how wore out it is, and see if I can't use some of these parts. I'm going to run through this very quickly because I talked to our local machine shop the other day and he's very, very busy. He won't be able to bore this for like a month and can't wait that long. So I'm going to, I'm going to have to bore it. So let's just get this thing tore apart real quick. Got some earls up in there and wooters. These heads up top here are disgusting. I'm gonna say she had Quaker State run in her at some point. Pretty doggone nasty. Oh yeah! Got the itty bitty valves in it. Itty bitty valves. Steel shim head gasket. Well, I do it every time. I forget. I gotta take the Earl pan off first. Let me flip her over. To those who are wondering why I didn't flip this over to uh, take that oil pan off, well, as you see, oil's dripping here. So there's oil in the oil pan. I just drained it, but there's still going to be some down in there. You flip it over, it's going to drain and it just makes a mess. This was the cleanest way to do it. So now I'm going to pull this oil pump off and then we're going to pull the cam out. Then we're going to flip it over and get the crank rods and pistons, all that out of it. This time I change set, we don't have very many miles on it. So I think we'll put it up and keep it. Use it on something else. Well, come off the cam. There you go, little buddy. Oh yeah, we'll put that up and actually we may, yeah, since it's already on here, if we reuse that crank, we'll just reuse this too. One of y'all sent me a lifter removal tool. It won't work on these old lifters. I'll show you here in a minute. But uh, they weren't bad. They come right out. All the bottoms of the lifters look good too, so I'm assuming this cam's gonna look all right. If I can get her out. Ta-da!
There's one. Let's look at this bear ink real quick, like. Um, don't look bad. Well, okay. Ow. What reeds has really got her? There. I ain't got no ridge reamer, so you experts, turn your head. What do the crank look like? The crank looks magnificent to me. It really does, I'm telling you. I'll show y'all in a little bit. Let me get the rest of this out, get it apart. Well, I just did some measuring with my micrometers on the crank here. The rod journals, they got about two by thousandths wear. That ain't bad. And the mains, it's been turned. The mains have been turned ten thousandths, and according to my mic, they have nowhere. So I think what we'll do, we'll use this crank. And we're going to polish it. No, sir. It looks pretty good. Yep. I'm pleased with that. We'll just buy some uh, two thousandths oversized. Is it oversized or undersized? I never can remember. Anyway, we'll buy bearings for 2,000s wear on the rods. We'll get some stock ones for the mains. Well, here's some of the bearings. Uh, I mean, they got a little wear, but nothing major. Uh, here's the mains right there. They look really good. Uh, cam, there was no lobes messed up that I saw. There ain't no lifters messed up, so awesome. Let me order parts. And as you can see, I got our next project right here. Let me get this done. We'll get back on the old forte. Well, it's been a few days since we worked on this old car. If you've seen my last two videos, well, you know that we had old C30 had to do a motor swap in. It was sitting right there. We are back on the old forte though, working on this old 327. As you can see, I got my boring bar set up. Uh, I done cleaned the deck real good. Cleaned the bottom of this so we, you know, good and true, true as we can be anyway. I done made one pass. Let me show you that if I can get my flashlight open. Also, no, by the way, see this flashlight? I just bought it yesterday. There's a very, very specific reason I bought this flashlight. Watch this. You hit the button one time, turns on. You hit the button one time, turns off. I cannot stand a flashlight that you have to hit 67 times because it's got 84 modes. It's, there's no use. Turn it on, turn it off. That's all I want. Anyway, uh, I was going to show y'all. I don't know if you can see it or not. We've cut just a little bit on that, that left side right there. Uh, that means we ain't quite center. Or we're as center as we can be, considering what we're using. Uh, what i got to do next is I've already pulled the cutter out. Let me show you. Here it is right here. It just slips in there like that. You turn this knob here a little bit. Check it with this mic. That'll tell you how much you're cutting off. So let me readjust that. Put it back in there. We'll turn it on. Let it make another pass. All right, got to turn back on. I went about five a thousandths out. And we are cutting, trying to see, almost all the way around. Might be missing just a little bit over here. So that means we're, we're pretty close to being centered. Good enough for what we do around here with this backyard butchery. Uh, let me make this pass here and we'll pull it out and we can get a little bit better look. And then here in a little bit, there's my box of pistons. I'll open them up, show them to you, and tell you all about them. All right, I've made a couple passes at five a thousandths each. And uh, we're cutting all the way around now, except right there at the very top. That's where all your wear is going to be. That 15 thousandths, that's where it's at. So now that I'm cutting all the way around, uh, most of it, I got my dial board gauge set up on four inches. I'm gonna stick it up in there from the bottom. Let's see where we're at. And I shall proceed to continue boring this thing out till we get it to 30, that well, we gotta measure our pistons. We'll do that in a little bit, but let me see what the dial board gauge says and see where we're at. All right, let's see what this old dial board gauge says. If y'all remember, remember this thing messed with me because the the anvil here would wear down. Well, it's, I still got the same one. I can't afford a good one. So this one here's gonna have to do. Let's just see where we're at right now. 
it is showing approximately about 10 ish let me turn it this way see what we got yeah about 10 10 and a half so let me keep on cutting we got to go to 30 uh tell you what let's go ahead and measure our pistons real quick i bought speed pro mainly because that's about the only ones they had that was what i wanted these are what you call hyper eutectic it's better than regular cast which these are cast but it's better than a regular old cast piston not quite as tough as a forged. The only time I really run a forged piston is supercharger, or if I was gonna run nitrous, which I've never fooled with nitrous, but you know, supercharger and nitrous about the only time I run forged. Um, Hyper Eutectic, they don't expand as much as a, as a uh, forged. The clearance on these is two by thousandths. It's pretty tight, yep. Matter of fact, we gotta measure it to make sure they are what they're supposed to be. If you look on the box, these are 30 over, by the way. On the end of the box, it'll tell you right here. Minimum clearance, one by thousandth. Skirt size, it tells you it's four inches and 28 by thousandths and then three quarters of a thousandths, basically. Uh, it tells you where to measure from, 2.41 inches from the top of the head. So let's just see where that's going to hit. 2.4 one right there from the top we need to measure oh they got us a little place to measure how about that that was awful nice of them yes sir see that these are coated skirts see that little section there that ain't coated that's where you're supposed to measure so let me get my um what you call it here let's see if we can't measure this see what it is well see what's weird is the this won't fit in here that ain't big enough so we're just going to do the best we can i'm probably going to take it out the bore out to four inches and 31 thousandths because you know on the box it says it's the skirt size is four inches and 28 and three quarter i want at least two thousand clearance so we're going to probably take it out to 31. let's just see what this here measures though at about that area we are looking at approximately it's 30 yep yeah, 30 thousandths and eight tenths so see this is what we ran into on dude if you haven't seen this born bar and all that before go check out the videos I did on dude building that motor. It'll be in the playlist on my main home page on the channel. Click playlist and then it'll, it'll you'll see it in there. But that's what we run into on dude because those pistons, the skirts were coated and I didn't know what measurement to use. Um, I still don't know on these either because I mean this is showing a lot bigger than what they're saying. Right there, feels about right. And again, I've come up with 30 thousandths and maybe one tenth. Uh, they say, I did read, where was it at? There's instructions here somewhere. It did say do not include the coating in your clearance measurements. Where does it say that right here somewhere? Piston to bore clearance has been affected by the addition of the coating. Boring the engine to the final bore size indicated will result in proper piston to cylinder wall clearance. Uh, piston to skirt size prior to coating remains unchanged. However, the diameter of the piston increased due to the addition of the DuraShield coating. Do not measure the skirt and compensate for the increase in diameter due to the coating, as this could lead to excess clearance and piston failure. So basically, um, I just got to go, I got to trust them, go by this measurement here, four inches, 28 and three quarter thousandths. So we're going to take her out to four inches and 31 by thousandths. That'll give me two and a quarter thousandths clearance. Hopefully, that's the plan. So let's get over and do that. I made a couple more passes and we're almost cutting all the way around. There's just a little bit over there at the very top. 
Uh, this pass should put us at about 19 thousandths. You see it, little spot over there on the right will be in the front now uh, that where it ain't cutting. This pass will put us at about 19 thousandths or so. So I think we'll just find it dandily. I'm gonna leave about two thousandths uh, hone stock, what they call it. I'll have to hone it out two thousandths to get to where I want it. Hopefully, that's the plan anyway. Um, let me keep on trucking. I'll be back when I get this cylinder where I want it. I just want to show y'all this real quick. This is the cutter. This slides in the in the head over there. What you do is you got to loosen that set screw. Then this thing right here, see the threads? That sets against a thing in the head of the boring bar. Well, you thread this out. I've been going about an eighth of a turn, and that's moving me about five but thousandths. And you turn that, you put this, turn that, tighten that set screw back up. Then you got your micrometer just for this apparatus. You stick it in there. And you turn this right here, and then you see what you got. This is going to put us at about 25 thousandths. Um, let me measure what we got. It should be around 1920. And then I'll cut another pass. I have to clean this out every time, you know, if I'm going to measure, because there is some cutting material dust stuff in here. Then, once I get it clean, I'll take my WND 4T and spray it down. The reason I do that is because, uh, well, like I mentioned a little while ago, that, um, what do you call it? Ooh, that shot me in my face. That's not good. I don't like that. Um, the reason I'm doing this is because the dial bore gauge, last time we did this, the anvil. Well, let me show you. This is what they call the anvil. Well, it kept wearing down a little bit, like a half a thousandth each time I check. And it took me a while to figure that out. So that's why I put the uh, WD-40 in there to give it a little lube and maybe... It won't wear that anvil out so quick. But we're showing right now, it's not quite 20. That's, yeah, that's what I was expecting. It's like 19 and three quarters, let's see. Yeah. Yep, about 19 and three quarters. All right, let me keep on cutting. I also know, by the way, you know, I'm talking about my anvil getting wore down on my dial bore gauge. Well, each time that I measure the bore, I will take it over yonder. I got my micrometer set up in my vise. I'll put that dial bore gauge in there and check it, make sure that it hasn't moved. So far it hadn't, so I think we're gonna be all right. Also, let's see, it sounded like it was cutting all the way around. No, sir, it ain't. We like just a little bit. See that little, little strip right there? Hopefully we get this thing bored out smooth all the way. If not, well, that ain't gonna be good. I'll be back in a minute. Well, I think we're there. Um, you can see it's, it finally cut all the way around, just barely on that last pass. We cut that a little close, but I done uh, calibrated my dial bore gauge. If I can hold everything steady, I'm gonna show y'all. We are at about 28 and a half by thousandths right in there. And I was wanting to go to 29 and leave <laughs> Two thousandths, you know, home stock. 28 and a half is just fine and dandily. We'll set up on this next cylinder. Let me show you how you do that. See these little fellers here? Let me clean that off real quick. I'll be right back. All right, I got everything cleaned up. You don't want no grit or anything on these feet. You want the cylinder clean as you can get it. But there's a knob right up here that you can turn. And watch these little feet right here. See it moving out? Now it's moving in. Well, that's how you center it. You take this handle here and you run it on down. I like to go almost not quite to the bottom, but but pretty close because that's where the least wear is going to be. Well, then you turn your knob right here. Watch, watch right here. You'll see that move when it goes to centering itself up. See it move just a little bit. That's it. That's how you center it up. Then. It's got a little thing on here, anchored to here. You tighten that up and it clamps it down, keeps it in place. 
that's pretty much it. Um, I would like to at least get half of the motor board. This is a very slow process. Plus, I got a late start. I, uh, I spent a couple of hours trying to straighten up, clean up, and rearrange just a little bit. Anyway, I got a late start. I would like to get half of this done today. We'll bore the other half tomorrow and probably get started uh, honing on it at least. Um, when I get done with this side, I'll be back and we'll look at all of them, check them out. Well, I do believe we got one half of the block board out. Looks pretty doggone good if you ask me. Oh yeah. And final measurement, 28 and a half, 29 and a half, 28 and a half, 28 and a half. Well, I say final, final for the boring. Um, tomorrow, I hope to get this side board, and then we'll start the honing process. I'll tell you right now, I'm not, I'm not looking forward to it. I despise honing because, see that down in there, the webbing, right there, right there. Well, normally I'll hit the webbing with the um, hone. Well, let me just show you. Let me see if I can find it. There's one right there I knocked off of the metal part. Here's one that, that exploded. Yes, sir, I'm bad about doing that. I'm going to try tonight to devise something that will attach here and will hit that webbing before my stone does. I believe I can come up with something. Um, speaking of hone stones, these are the ones I'm going to use right here. One of these. Uh, our local machine shop feller, he gave me them. Appreciate that. That's mighty nice of him. Um, I didn't show you all my piston, neither did I. It's flat top with two valve reliefs, not four. That's five cc's of relief. Uh, I did the math. It's going to be about nine and a half, ten to one compression. Uh, it's, you know, pushing it with iron heads on pump gas but like i said that's a cruiser we'll back that timing off we'll truck on down the road oh yeah anyway i'm going in the house i'll see y'all manana didn't know i knew spanish did you i was a spanish teacher before i become a youtuber <laughs> i'll see y'all tomorrow well i'm back at it again today trying to get the other half of this old block board we got an issue um i'm at 28 and a half by thousands right now that's what i've been trying to take them to 28 and a half 29 so we're in there and uh, this one is at 28 and a half. And well, y'all look in here. See that little streak right there in the middle of your screen? That's where we're not cutting. That means we're more off center than usual. Um, I'm gonna go one more thousandth. Hopefully, fingers crossed, let me cross them really good. Hopefully, if I go one more thousandth, it'll clear that up and then we'll be okay. Just move my cutter one thousandth. Let's see what happens. Is she gonna cut or is she not? Let me get my light. I think we just passed it. Yep. Well, I don't know what we're gonna do there, but let's just go on out. I'm gonna measure it. Um, if it didn't take anything off, well, I'll move my cutter again. If it did, then well, we're just gonna have to deal with it. Hopefully uh, that little place there will come out when we hone it. Well, I just got done measuring it, and we went a thousandth and a half. That puts us at 30. That only leaves one thousandth to hone out, so we got to stop. Um, but you can see, we didn't get it all. It's not the end of the world. It'll be fine. Hopefully, it'll hone out. I doubt it, because I can feel it pretty good. Um, it'll be fine, though. We'll hone it out, put a piston in there, and keep on trucking down the road. Let me do these other three, and I'll be back. Well, I don't know why it happened. Well, I do. <laughs> it's called MLS. But you got a little stop right here. Comes down and hits your switch. Cuts it off. You can adjust it. You uh, loosen that, move this up and down to adjust it, tighten that back up. This is my fourth pass on this cylinder right here. She stopped at the same spot every time. But for whatever reason, this time, it didn't stop. Nope. Crashed into the webbing. I mean, well, you can see, we're just a wee bit off center. Yep, sure are. <laughs> I'm gonna loosen it up. I'm gonna hopefully get that back center. I'm gonna take a, like a one thousandth cut, see where we're at. Hopefully, I can get it true back up because um, I think I don't like, but maybe five by thousands. I have to measure. This was my second to last pass. Anyway, it's just you know MLS is something I deal with every single day of my life. I think I got it centered back up. What I did was center it with these feet first, and then like it's done on just about every cylinder. It'll be heavy on one side. And the way I know that is I put my cutter in here. And well, I kept 
adjusting the cutter till it would just barely scrape the cylinder. Then I'd run her down. I got it right there. Listen for it to scrape. I'd do it in four different spots. And uh, finally got it where it's scraping on all four sides. Um, we're at 23 thousandths, like about six, getting it out to where I want it. Uh, I'm fixing to make a pass. Hopefully it's just a little tiny cut. I'll measure it, see where we're at, and I'll proceed to continue. Here's what I was doing when it crashed. Uh, normally, even if I'm over here doing something, I'll be listening for it when it quits cutting. I'll listen for it to cut off on its own. If it don't, then I know to you know go cut it off. Well, I got into reading this how on this home how to make your own cutting oil. Eight parts kerosene, one part earl. Anyway, that's what I was reading. wasn't paying attention. Uh, from now on, I'll be standing right here with it when it quits cutting. I'm going to cut it off with my finger clicker. I ain't going to rely on this automatic cutoff system because apparently it is garbagerie. Anyway, I got this in to do. Hopefully I get it straightened out and I got one more to do. We'll be done with the boring of the block. Here's the deal, fellas. I got her straightened out. Oh, yeah. She's cutting all the way around, cutting all the way up and down. Ain't got no bare spots. Oh, yeah. Measured it. It's at 29 and a half. That leaves us one and a half a thousandths to uh, hone out. Let me move on to this cylinder, get it done, and then I got to modify my hone, and then I got some other stuff I'm gonna do. I'll show y'all in a little bit. Got the old block board. They all look pretty doggone good, except for that one right there. Yes, sir, I hate that. I don't know if maybe that cylinder wore funny, or maybe I didn't get it centered up. I don't know. I don't care. It is what it is. Maybe it'll hone out. If it don't, well, it'll still ruin, I bet you. <laughs> Right now, what we need to do, we need to start honing on it. But, like I told y'all yesterday, I got to modify my hone. Let's get this over here to the vise, and I'll show you what I'm going to do. Here's my hone. I got it to all apart. Here's all the little pieces and parts to it. Um, what we're going to do is this, this hole right here is a perfect size for a 5 8 11 tap. We're going to run that down in there, make some threads. Then we're going to take a bolt, screw it in there, just like that right there. It'll be steel. Then you see this small disc right here. I'm gonna make a bigger one, three and three quarter inch diameter. And it's gonna be sitting right here. And then uh, we're gonna take the spring, hopefully, out of this old fuel pump, put it in between the two discs. When uh, this bigger disc hits the webbing in the block, it's gonna do that right there, let it flex. That way we ain't tearing stuff up, we ain't hitting our stones on the webbing and shattering them. Um, will it work? I don't know, but you know what? There ain't but one way to find out. Let's get busy doing this. I think first thing we'll do, let's tap this hole for threads. All right, y'all tell me if that's straight when I go to turning this. I don't want no cricket hole. That looks straight to y'all. No, sir, that's crooked. It's crooked than a dog's leg. Eh, that ain't bad. Eh, it's a little crooked this way. See if I can straighten her up a little bit. All right, let's go with it. Oh, yeah. I can't go real deep with these threads because this little piece right here sticks up in there. I got maybe. I don't know, half, three quarter of an inch that I can go. Let me see how deep I've went so far. Um, let me stick this piece in there, see what it looks like. I go a wee bit more. That's probably gonna do it right there. Let me check it real quick. Yep, that's about as far as we can go. Now, let's get over here at the weld table, cut us our bigger disc. We'll try to trace a circle out on here. So I would like for it to be, you know, pretty round and not all lumpy. So what I'm gonna do, I got this set at an inch and seven eighths. That's half of a three and three quarter inch circle. I think it is anyway. I'm gonna trace all crap. I'm gonna try to trace a circle 
out and we're gonna cut it out with a plasma cutter. Well, come here. All right, now that I got that traced. I'm gonna try, well, I'll show you here in just a minute what I'm gonna try to do. All right, here's the plan. You know, I got my center marked right here. Let's drill this hole in it. About like that. Then, what I plan on doing, I'm gonna take this piece of welding wire, wrap it around here, approximately like that, do a twisty twist. We might not have enough room to do this, but what I, what I wanna do next is get this um, on that line, get this piece of wire wrapped around it. That way we can cut us pretty much a perfect little circle and uh, I don't have all them jagged looking edges. That's my plan anyway, whether or not we accomplish that, I don't know. But we're gonna try it because, what is it? The only way to know is to do it. Well, let me work on that, but y'all get the idea. This is gonna be my guide. That way we can cut us a perfect little circle. All right, I got my little circle made here, my little loop, whatever you'll call it. Yes, I do know that they make this kind of contraption you can buy online, but I need it right now. So this is gonna have to do, hopefully we'll make us a pretty decent circle. Let's see what it does. Well, that didn't work real good. <laughs> he come loose and I cut my wire in two. So, back to the drawing board. Let me cut me another piece of wire. All right, I got me another one made. Maybe I won't cut this one in two <laughs> this time. Let's see how it's gonna do. It wants to hang up. Well, it moved on me. This is not working out real good. I'm gonna cut the wire again, so let me make a third one. Third time's a charm, I think is what they say. All right, let's look at it. That ain't too bad. Let me clean the edges up a little bit and I think it'll do. Don't try this at home, kids. No, that ain't working. Let me do something different. Woo hot! Woo hot again, hot hot. I smell skin burning, that was so hot. Let me get my gloves on. I think that'll do. I gotta drill a 5 8 hole in the middle of this right here. Come on now. Is that it? Or do I need to go one more step? One more step. Oh yeah, it worked just like a charm. Now all we gotta do is bust this open and get this spring out. Well, <laughs> I busted it. Hey, there's a spring right there. I don't think that's big enough, is it? Let me see, where's my bolt? Where'd my bolt go? No, sir. 
Tis not big enough. Well, darn. Let me see what I can do with this. Get that busted open right there. I got my smallest chisel I could find. Getting gas everywhere. All right, will it come off now? Oh, look at here, look at here. Oh, there it is right there. That might be a little stiff. Let's give it a try. Let me see if I can get it out of here. Oh, my finger. Oh, man, that hurts so bad. Oh. There we go. Ta-da! There it is. Uh, I don't know. We'll try it and see what it does. All right, here are the pieces and parts. That's going to go like that right there. Then I cut a few coils off at spring because I don't have a whole lot of room here. And then uh, what we're going to do, I got a jam nut, but it's really, I need to cut it in half. So let me take it over there to the grinder. I'm going to grind her about half in two, and I'll be back, and we'll get this put back together. I'm going to try this cutoff wheel firstly. It may chop it right in two. Ta-da! All right, let's put this thing together. That's going to go just like that right there. My locking ring... I need to leave about a half inch of space here. Let me get my little tape measure. There's not a whole lot of room between this hitting the webbing and my stones being able to come down far enough to get the whole bore. It's about a half an inch, I think is what I measured the other day. So we're gonna leave it approximately right there. Let's try that, see what it does. Got to put my spring a on there. I ain't got no way to tighten that uh, lock nut, I don't guess. So we're just going to run this all the way down. Hopefully we ain't running it down too far and interfere with the uh, uh, this other mechanism that goes in the middle. All right. Let me see if that's going to interfere. No, sir. It sure ain't. Awesome. Let me see if I can't tighten that lock nut up a little bit and then we'll take it over and see what it does. All right, I got it in the hole. I don't have it super tight. As you can see, I can turn it by hand. This is that hole that didn't bore out all the way, by the way. Uh, I'm going to put just a little WD-40 in it. We're going to try it out real quick, see how it does. If it does good, well, uh, I'll show y'all what I'm going to make next. All right, I've got the drill hooked up. I'm having to use the uh, corded one, you know, the wrist breaker 6000 because the cordless one, it just won't pull it. So let's go slow. I'm gonna bump it on that webbing. Let's just see what happens. Y'all look at there. Y'all hear that? I'm bumping on it. Oh, yeah. That's gonna work awesome. That is awesome. Um, let me make sure. Yeah, we're getting all the way to the bottom with the home stones. Oh, this is just, this is awesome. I'm going to patent this idea. <laughs> yeah, this is awesome. All right, that's, that's where it's hitting right there. So let me get a light and look and just make sure that we got, we're getting all the way down to the bottom. Let us see. Um... Well, my fat belly won't let me bend over far, far enough to see. I don't think we quite are getting all the way. No, so we like probably a quarter inch. So what I'll do is I'll modify it and take up some of that distance. You know, with the spring, we might cut another coal out of the spring. But I think this idea is going to be awesome. Oh, yeah. 
Well, it looks like that's going to work pretty goodly. Like I said, we need to take up a little distance here. I'll cut maybe one more coil off the spring. I think that'll work. What I'm going to do next is I want to have a flooded bath of cutting oil. You know, that, what was it, eight parts kerosene, one part earl. But I ain't going to do it tonight. It's late, and I want to go in the house. So tomorrow we'll rig that up, then we'll go to honing this thing out. Did we... Did we do anything right there with that spot? Let me wipe that off real quick. No, sir, it's still there. We probably ain't going to be able to take that out, and I hate that, but ain't, ain't nothing I can do about it. Anyways, tomorrow we'll get this block honed. Well, we're back at it again today, but before we get back at it again today, I want to hang this up. I got me an extinction core reel. I think I'm going to put it right over yonder on that wall, and I might get me another one eventually put over here. But anyway, let's let's go hang that thing up real quick. I think I'm gonna put it right here on this pole, but I would like to have a little more room. So I think all these cabinets, we're gonna scoot them that way, I don't know, a foot or so. So let me do that real quick, Mike. I wish I had a little more junk in here. Here's my cane I found in the woods. I need to sand it down and Put some finish on it. All right, here we go. Oh my goodness, that thing's heavy. Whoa. Oh, well, it don't want to move, goodness. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm probably gonna move that fire extinguisher. You can't hardly get to it. Oh yeah. Come on now. This one here is just a before falling apart. Oh crap, what was that? It was a pack of honing stones that fell from up here. We can't use these by the way. They're too far apart to fit my home. Oh yeah, yeah. This here's pretty heavy too. <laughs> Now, give me a little bit more room to put that. Oh yeah. All right, I think we'll put her approximately right about, oh, we'll go down about right here. Come on now. Well, <laughs> that's a good China quality stuff right there. Yes, sir. Let me get some real screws. All right, let's try this again with hopefully what is a little bit better screw. Got this little bolt we gotta put in here. All right, I'll tighten that up here in a minute. Let's plug it in, plug it in. And we're done with that. Awesome. Glad to get that done. It's gonna be both handy and dandy. I'll get another one over yonder sometime. But let me show you my apparatus I come up with for my cutting fluid. I just went to the Dollar Gentral right here. Got this tub. And then y'all seen this little pump. That's what I fill my heater up with. It does pretty good. Uh, just got it clamped to the side. I got a rag wrapped around it for a filter because, you know, there's going to be metal get in there. Um, and just got my hose. I got a bolt stuck in here. Got my hose wire tied right there. And we may have to adjust this a little bit, but and it's probably going to splash me a little bit. Might have to put me a little guard here or something to keep from getting soaked with discals. But I think it's going to work. We ain't going to try it right now, though, because... Like I told you last night, we got to modify this right here. I know how I'm gonna do it. Let me get it over on the vise and I'll show you how I'm gonna do it. Basically, all I'm gonna do is screw this bolt in. We're gonna take half of this distance up. I need to measure that too, by the way. Um, but, you know, we got this center part that goes up in here. I'm gonna stick it in here cause I may have cut some off that bolt cause I'm afraid it's, it might hit this right here. We'll see here in just a minute. But let me get my tape measure that and then we'll go half that distance. 
We've got approximately, oh, what is that? Five eighths. Uh, we'll go five sixteenths. That sure don't leave a whole lot of room, does it? As you can see, my lock nut ain't doing a whole lot. Let's slide that up in there. Okay, we're already hitting it, so, yeah. Let me cut, I don't know, probably a half inch or so off the end of this bolt. Then we'll stick it back in and try it again. All right, let's put this back in there. See how it's gonna do. Put this apparatus back in here, make sure we ain't hitting it. Well, I don't got my spring fully compressed now. I ain't got no give, which I would probably be okay, but I want a little bit of spring. So let me cut, I don't know, a coil and a half off of that and see what we get. That sure ain't a whole lot of spring, but we don't need a whole lot either. So maybe this will work, I don't know. If not, we'll have to modify it. That is about 7 sixteenths. It ain't what I wanted, but I think we're going to try right there. Let me put this piece up in there and make sure it ain't hitting the bolt. Oh, no. I think we'll be okay. Let me see if I can tighten that uh, lock nut up, and we'll go try it. Whilst I was trying to set my hone up, get my tension right on the walls here, um, I dropped it. It went all the way through, landed on my brand spankingly new tub, and, well, busted it. Let me run to the Dollar Gentle real quick and give me another tub. Got me a tub. I got it full of diesels and earls. It's uh, eight parts. Well, it's supposed to be kerosene, but diesel's what I got. That's what I'm going to use. And then one part of earl. Um, I got her propped up with this jack stand because when I was putting the diesel in it, well, she almost went off the end there. That would have been a mess. Anyway, let me get y'all set up on the camera stand and we're probably gonna make a mess here. Hopefully not, but let's get to honing on this cylinder, see what it does. Let me turn the uh, fluid on, see what we got going on here. Well, <laughs> we ain't got nothing going on. Well, I had to take my filter off there cause it was impeding flow too much and still, <laughs> it still ain't flowing a whole lot. It takes it just a minute to get up here. Plus, my hose down here is leaking. I need to go buy a new one of these, I guess, but that's, and you don't want a whole lot of flow because if you got a whole lot, well, it's just gonna splash everywhere. Probably gonna splash everywhere anyway, and I'm gonna have to fashion me some kind of a wall right here to keep it off of me. But uh, let's just try it like that, see what it does. All right, let me tighten this up just a wee bit. About right there. We'll give her the old try. Yes, sir. It's going to make an awful mess. Yeah, let me see if I can't devise some kind of shield here to keep it off of me. Well, that's going to be pretty doggone messy. Got me a shield made out of cardboard. Oh, yeah. Looks pretty good. This is backyard butchery at its finest right here. Sure is. Um... If this works, then, you know, we don't have to update all this. This is just, uh, we're in the research and development phase of this right here. If it works pretty good, we'll get us a better pump, and I'll make us some kind of shield out of metal and make it where it'll drain down in the pan real good. But for now, I think this is going to work. Let's give her a try anyway. Let me set y'all up. All right, let's give her a try once again. Let me turn my pump on. Get us some fluid pumping up here. Get her aimed over here where I need it. Here we go. All right, I'm gonna pull it out and uh, we'll measure it and see what we got. Well, as you can see on the floor, I'm making a mess on this side over here. It's containing it, keeping it off of me pretty well. But you see it dripping down there and while well, it's running down the block and uh, this is gonna work, but we gotta do a little revising cause I don't wanna make this big old mess. But I just put the dial bore gauge in here and what I do, 30 seconds maybe? 
it's already took it out a half a thousandth. If my Dahlberg gauge ain't, you know, moved, I'll go check it in a minute. I don't think it has. So that's awesome. This is definitely an improvement over what we were doing last time on dude's motor. You know, it took me forever to get it honed out. So this is very promising. Uh, let me let me revise this and see what I can come up with and make this a little less messy. Because I'm impatient, I don't want to have to redesign this just yet. Um, I went and got me a couple of buckets to catch what's spilling off here. Um, what we're probably going to have to do is just get like a great big old tub that we can set the motor down in. Well, I think it's basically, you know, when they're boring and honing, they're sort of sitting in a big old tub. I'll have to find something or build something. But right now, I'm anxious to get at least one cylinder honed and just see how much easier and quicker this is going to be. Last time I measured, um, it was about a quarter of a thousandth shy on the bottom. So I'm going to dwell at the bottom a little more than I do at the top. And hopefully it'll bring it on out. All right, at the bottom we got a little over 30 and a half. The middle is just a hair over 30 and a half. And then at the top, it's about 30 and three quarters. We did a little bit. Let me keep on trucking with it. I just checked the calibration. Okay, well that's good. <laughs> that's real good. <laughs> right one of my stones down in here. Now, as I was saying before, I was so rudely interrupted. Um, that definitely keeps that stone clean. I just checked the calibration on the dial gauge. It's still dead on zero, so that's awesome. Let me tighten her up just a wee bit more. What do we have? We got 31 at the top, the middle, 31, and then down here at the bottom we got 30 and 3 quarters basically. I think we'll leave it alone, except I can't, I can't get a good 45 crosshatch with this thing. I've turned it just as slow as it'll go up and down real fast, I still can't get it. So. Think what I might do, get the old dingleberry hone out, and we'll give it real quick up and down, get that 45, and we may be done with that one. All right, I got the old dingleberry hone right here. Let's see if we can get some crosshatch going on. Oh yeah, that is just, that's beautiful right there. It sure is. Um, the dingleberry makes you think we took that away, but we didn't. I can still feel it. It's just going to have to be what it is, fellas. But yeah, that ain't bad. Let me get y'all over here and I'll show y'all that cross hatch. It is absolutely gorgeous. Let me see if I can get this camera raw down in here where y'all can see that cross hatch. It ain't bad. Oh no. I'm I'm happy with that. I'll tell you what, this is this is making this a lot a lot easier than last time a lot quicker but it is messy you can see it's all over the floor i got an idea uh let me go check some stuff out and i may have some stainless that we can build us a tub out of to do this and contain all this mess um i'll be back in a little while and i'll let you know what i'm gonna do well there's my metal i told you i thought it had some stainless there it is oh yeah nothing but the best for the backyard butchery that we're about to do. <laughs> oh yeah. Uh, well, I'll tell you more about my plans, how I'm gonna build it. Not this week. We're gonna cut this video off right here. But here's the deal. I need to get this truck backed into this shop in this spot here, up there where my plasma cutter and welder is. I'll just hang it off tailgate and we'll cut it piece at a time. That means I gotta get the Forte out of the way. Well, I'm tired of not driving this car. We can officially drive it now. Got tags on it, got insurance on it. It does run and drive and stop. 
Let's take her down the road. Oh, yeah. All right, here we go. This cold start on the old Forte. I'm on, girl. Well, I brought it over here to Mama's. Let her look at it. She seems to like it pretty good. I gotta go back to the house now and get my Metri and some test leads and I gotta go help uh, my handy dandy assistant work on a lift. So let's head back to the house and get that.
Well, I think that was a pretty successful shakedown run. We still got some work to do, no doubt about it. I don't think I got any back brakes. Remember, I had to back them way off because those uh, uh, drums, you know, were kind of tight and warped. I uh, had to work on that a little bit. Pretty sure drive shaft is hitting the uh, tunnel. I know for a fact that we're, we're slamming metal to metal rear end to frame. Well, just watch this right here. Let me get my foot on this bumper. I mean, it bounces pretty easily. I got shocks somewhere around here. Got to put them on the back. That'll solve that problem. Hopefully, uh, of course, it's like a gas chamber inside all the fumes. <laughs> Very loud. The uh, trunk lid here, well, it's doing this the whole time. So we got to fix that. Exhaust, we're going to run it on out the back. Uh, because even if this wasn't a wore out motor smoking like it does, we're still going to get fumes inside. So we're going to run the exhaust on out. Oh, uh, the steering is pretty good. It's a little bit quick. I don't know if it's just that uh, rack, that's the nature of it, or maybe we have a little too much pressure. Might have to uh, uh, turn the pressure down on it. You put a orifice in line on the, uh, the pump to bring the pressure down, and it won't steer as quick. I mean, I'm fine with it, but we may fool with that a little bit. It's got, you know, it's got some issues, but... That's what a shakedown run is for. Oh yeah, figure out all that stuff. Uh, we'll get all that fixed eventually, but hopefully next week I will have a motor put together and hopefully in the vehicle, then we can go, uh, go ahead and start working on all this other stuff. Oh, the middle carb, you know, that's the one it runs off of all the time. It, we got to do some work on it. It doesn't have a pump shot and it hesitates when you get on it. So we're either going to have to fix that or put another carb in the middle because that ain't worth crap. No, sir, it sure ain't. But as far as the way it drives and rides, I'm okay with it. You know, we fix this slamming in the back. I think we'll be all right. I'm good with the way it drives. Uh, steers, brakes, like I said, they leave a little bit to be desired. We're going to bleed them again because, you know, I had the brakes apart a couple of times and maybe it's a little bit of air in it. Uh, but, I mean, they'll stop it. They'll stop it just fine. But I want them to be a little bit better. We'll, we'll work on that. I almost forgot about this rear tire. It rubs on a right-hand turn. It ain't real bad, but I don't know if y'all can see right in there where it's rubbing the tire. It ain't real bad, but it does rub. And, well, I've unbolted the fender from the running board because that was making it worse. Still rubs. We'll have to, we'll have to beat and bang on that fender and do something. But, yeah, we're going to have to fix that, too. Well, here's the deal, fellas. We've been working on this old car for about six months off and on. You know, we took a couple of breaks. Um, here lately, I've been getting one or two comments a video saying, we're sick of this 40, do something else. Uh, go back to while it runs. No, that's not gonna happen. <laughs> I'm not the type that jumps from this project to that one and then that one and then, then that one. And we might come back to this one, you know, six months from now. That's, that's not me, that's not what I'm gonna do. Those people, they probably want to see this whole build in two videos ain't happening especially ain't happening with me but i reading those comments i sort of started rushing through getting this thing on the road no sir i'm done with that we're gonna take our time we're gonna do it like i want it when we're done with it we're done with it we'll move on to the next project so i'm gonna say two more videos i know i keep saying that but stuff keeps popping up that we have to do but hopefully two more videos we'll be done with this We'll move on to the next project. I do appreciate you 30,000 or so hanging around for this whole series. Y'all are awesome. Anyway, appreciate y'all watching. Hope you enjoyed it. If you don't mind, hit that like, comment, subscribe, share it with your friends. And until next time, go do something. Blur, blur.